This lesson is geared towards students who already have some knowledge of how to calculate protons, neutrons, and electrons for a neutral atom. This is mostly the same thing, especially mathematically. However, we're bringing something new into this one and we're going to talk about isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element with different masses because they have different numbers of neutrons. The protons are the same, the electrons are the same, the only thing that differs is that number of neutrons in the nucleus. So most of my students are usually really surprised when I tell them they're actually three different carbon atoms. Um, you look at the periodic table and you just make the assumption, a reasonable assumption if you've never been taught this, that there's one carbon there's one nitrogen, there's one oxygen, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll use carbon as an example just because most students are familiar with that. Um, there are actually three carbon isotopes. There's carbon-12, there's carbon-13, and there's carbon-14. Now there are some others that have been created in a lab. I believe they go all the way from carbon-8 to carbon-22, but um, those are mostly unstable and don't really have any practical uses. So carbon 12, 13, and 14 are what we would consider the naturally occurring more stable isotopes of carbon. Now we will see isotopes written in two different ways generally. You'll see it notated in either isotope notation, which would be the symbol, a dash, followed by the mass, or you will see it notated with the symbol and the mass to the upper left. You may even see the symbol with the mass to the upper left and the atomic number to the lower left. It's not really necessary for us to put that um, atomic number there because the atomic number is not going to change. Carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14 have the same atomic number because they are carbon. The fact their carbon doesn't change, just we have different isotopes because the carbons are just a tad different from each other in terms of mass. So these are the two ways that you will generally see an isotope written. Um, carbon-14, I'll go and point out just a couple of interesting facts just because it's kind of neat. Um, most people have heard of carbon-14 because it's used in radioactive dating. That's because carbon-14 is actually radioactive. Um, that means over time it decays and it releases a certain amount of radiation. When a living, living organism dies, the carbon-14 in its body will also slowly begin that decaying process and because scientists know the rate at which it decays, they can use that information to date maybe when an old organism once lived. So when you hear carbon-14 dating, that is specific to the carbon-14 isotope because that is the only isotope of carbon within those three, 12, 13, and 14, that is radioactive and can be used for that purpose. So most people have heard of carbon-14 dating but don't really know what it is and probably don't know about isotopes when they initially hear about that process. So we will calculate the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons as we normally would. But here's what I tell students, just to keep it simple. If they give you a mass, use it. For example, plain old carbon has an atomic number of six. That means it has six protons, six electrons, if it is electrically neutral, and because they're not giving us any isotope, they're just saying general old carbon. We're going to look at the periodic table and we're going to use the mass of carbon, which is 12.01, so we're going to round it to 12. Now, we'll point out that 12.01 is actually the average atomic mass. Scientists have figured out what percentage of carbons have a mass of around 12, what percentage of carbons have a mass of around 13, and what percentage of carbons have a mass around 14, and they take what we call a weighted average. It's kind of like when you're figuring up what your grade is in a class. Your homework may be weighted differently than test, so you have to take that weight into account. That's exactly what scientists do 
when they're coming up with what I would call just a standard mass for that element. So this 12.01 is actually a product of the average um, atomic mass, or we may call it average isotope mass. Regardless, if you see just carbon, you're going to assume that you're just going to look at the periodic table and use the mass that's there. So if carbon has a mass of 12, 12 minus 6 is also going to be 6 neutrons. And again, that is assuming a mass number of 12. Now, carbon-14, that's still carbon. So it still has 6 protons and 6 electrons. But here's where your difference is. They are specifically telling you, I am talking about the isotope carbon-14. So when they give you a specific mass, that's what you need to use to calculate your number of neutrons. So 14 minus 6 is going to be 8 neutrons. Likewise, they might give you nuclear notation. They have given you exactly the same information here, only they've put the mass to the upper left. You do it the same way. We know carbon has 6 protons, 6 electrons, and 14 minus 6, which is 8 neutrons. So just remember it this way. If they give you the mass, use it to calculate your number of neutrons. If you're not given a specific mass, like this, just refer to the periodic table, take that mass, round it, and use that to determine your number of neutrons. So we're going to do just a little bit more practice on this, uh, just to give you a little more insight, and um, it's super easy. So very much like just regular old proton, neutron, electron calculations. So we're just going to fill this chart out. Y'all know I love charts. It keeps everything organized. It's easy to look at. So you can see in this column I've given you some isotopes or atoms. And just remember that the atomic number is always the number of protons. It is also always the number of electrons if the atom is neutral. And you hear me saying that over and over because we are going to get to a point where we're dealing with ions and in that case the atom won't be neutral and the number of electrons will actually be different but we're not worried about that today. Um, also the number of neutrons is your mass number minus your atomic number. Big number minus little number. Okay. So let's take a look at these and just see how we work through isotopes as opposed to neutral at or as opposed to just a regular atom. So um, carbon-13, it's carbon, so if you look at the periodic table, you can see that carbon has an atomic number of 6 right there, okay? So the atomic number is 6. Now it's asking for the mass number. Normally, we would look at the periodic table to get the mass, but you can see that they have actually given us a very specific mass number that they want us to use, so we're going to use 13. Now, because we have an atomic number of 6, we have 6 protons and 6 electrons, and to get the number of neutrons, we're going to say 13 minus 6, so we have 7 neutrons. Again, if they give you a mass use it. Next we have chlorine 37, so they are talking about a specific isotope of chlorine. Now chlorine has an atomic number of 17. That means we have 17 protons and 17 electrons. But you can see that they've given us a specific mass of 37, so we're going to use that mass to solve for the number of neutrons. So 37 minus 17 is 20 neutrons. If they give you the mass, use it. Now, we'll compare that to just plain old chlorine, like you're just going to look at the periodic table. So chlorine still has an atomic number of 17 because it's chlorine. So it's 17 protons and 17 electrons. Now this time they did not give us a specific mass. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the periodic table and we're going to see that chlorine has a mass of 35.45. So we're just going to round that to 35. And then 
to get our number of neutrons, we're just going to say 35 minus 17, which is 18 neutrons. The next one is oxygen. Oxygen has an atomic number of eight, and I'll point that out. I think everybody knows where to find that, but just to be on the safe side, atomic number right here of eight. So we have eight protons and we have eight electrons. Now, they did not give me a specific isotope. It just says oxygen. I'm going to look at the periodic table and I'm going to see the mass is about 15.99. We're going to round that up to 16. That's universally acceptable. We usually just put 16.0 when we're maybe doing grandma atom conversions or something like that. So the mass is 16 and we are going to say 16 minus 8, which is 8 neutrons. So if they don't give us a mass, we know we can always look at the periodic table and get that information. Now, the next one is giving us oxygen 18. So they're giving us a specific isotope that we are supposed to use. Now remember, oxygen still has an atomic number of eight that never changes. So I have eight protons and eight electrons. But this time, they gave me 18 as the mass so I'm going to use that 18 to find the number of neutrons. 18 minus 8 is 10 neutrons. So they gave me the mass and that's what I used. Let's take a look at sulfur 36. So sulfur has an um, atomic number of 16. So there are 16 protons and there are 16 electrons. Now this time they're specifically giving me this isotope with a mass of 36. So I'm going to use the mass they gave me and then I'm going to use that mass, subtract the atomic number, and 36 minus 16 is 20 neutrons. They gave me a mass and I used it. Argon 37. Argon is number 18 on the periodic table. Atomic number is 18. That means I have 18 protons and I have 18 electrons. They're giving me a mass of 37, so that's what I'm going to use to find my number of neutrons. And 37 minus 18 is 19 neutrons. They gave me a mass, and that's what I used. So hopefully you're really seeing this trend and getting a little more comfortable with it. Um, if they don't give you a mass, just remember you can always get that from the periodic table. That just means that a specific isotope is not being specified. Sometimes it's not important, and sometimes it is. Like if maybe you specifically needed carbon-14 to do some carbon-14 dating. You can't do that with carbon-12 and carbon-13. All right, let's look at the next one, argon 38. We just said argon has an atomic number of 18, so again, I want to point out, it doesn't matter what the isotope is, it's still argon, and that atomic number identifies the atom. So we have 18 protons and we have 18 electrons. Now this time, they gave me a mass of 38, so that's the mass that I'm going to use to solve. So 38 minus 18 is 20 neutrons. Now, it's not always going to be necessary to show this work. It just depends on your teacher and what they're asking you for. But if you're taking notes, it's really important that you write that down because you may need to refer back to it later. And sometimes we just don't remember. We think we will and we forget. So always have those things written down in your notes and um, that will make your life easier if you go back and look at it later. The next one is just plain old argon. No isotope is specified. I know it has an atomic number of 18, which means it has 18 protons and 18 electrons. Now this time I'm going to look at the periodic table. And argon has a mass of, we're going to round that to 40. Remember we round to a whole number. 
and 40 minus 18 is going to be 22 neutrons. And we're going to do one more. Let's take a look at manganese, not to be confused with magnesium. A lot of students, especially beginners, it's really easy to confuse manganese with magnesium. Two different things, right? Here's manganese with an atomic number of 25. So we've got 25 protons. We have 25 electrons. And the mass of manganese, we will round to 55. So 55 minus 25 is 30 neutrons. So um, the reason that I gave you a mix of isotopes and then just the general atoms are um, because I really wanted you to see the difference. If they give you the mass, use it. If they don't give you the mass, look at the periodic table. I think that just drives that point home. Now we're just going to look at one more thing just to make sure that everyone understands the definition of an isotope and also take a real specific look at how it relates to the math. So this is just kind of tying everything together and just one last thing to take a look at. So remember that isotopes are atoms of the same element with different masses because they have different numbers of neutrons. Same element means same atomic number. It's the same element. The mass is different because the neutrons changed. So let's just take a look at um, a couple different versions of sulfur and we'll relate this back up to the definition and this is probably all you'll ever need to remember how to calculate protons, neutrons, and electrons in an isotope. So sulfur has an atomic number of 16 and we're just going to go ahead and look that up. It's right there, atomic number 16. So I'm going to go ahead and fill all of these in because they're all sulfur. Even though they look a little different over here, they're still sulfur. Now, let's look up the masses. They do not give me a specific isotope here, so I'm just going to look on the periodic table and I see that I'm going to round the mass of sulfur to 32. Now on this one, they're giving me 33 for the mass. They're telling you I am talking about the specific isotope of sulfur with a mass of 33. So we're going to write that down. Here they're giving us a 34, and here they're giving us sulfur 36. So let's calculate the protons, neutrons, and electrons for each. This first one, because we have an atomic number of 16, we have 16 protons and 16 electrons. We're going to use the mass that we looked up on the periodic table, and 32 minus 16 is 16 neutrons. For sulfur 33, we still have the same number of protons and electrons. That doesn't change, but now we're going to use the mass they gave us, and 33 minus 16 is 17 neutrons. Sulfur 34 still has 16 protons and 16 electrons, but we're going to use the mass they gave us, and 34 minus 16 is 18 neutrons. And the last one, sulfur 36, still has 16 protons and 16 electrons, but we're going to use this mass of 36 to find the number of neutrons, and 36 minus 16 is 20 neutrons. So this ties back perfectly to our definition of an isotope. Isotopes are atoms of the same element with different masses because they have different numbers of neutrons. So that sums up isotopes. Now you should know how to calculate protons, neutrons, and electrons for a just plain old atom, a neutral atom, and you should know how to calculate protons, neutrons, and electrons when you are given a specific isotope of an atom.